Okay, so many of you have been asking about the four set mini journals of Cloudy Seaside. And so here they are, all four of them. Basically, I'm gonna try to go through this as quickly as possible, but not too quick, because if you wanna see the quick flip throughs, we have those. This is a little bit more detailed information on how some of this was put together. Uh, for the accordion fold, the concertina accordion fold, I have a video for that, very quick. It's super simple. Um, so once you're to this point, then we'll kind of talk about applying the papers. So how it started out, once I had the black, all the business cards and the accordion fold ready, laid them out, actually folded them together and then glued one single piece to the four of them. So this was one sheet. That way they all kind of, you can see here how they line up. Same thing. Um, this piece was added afterwards because I folded it. It was created using brushos just being painted on. Note on that one is that you want to make sure that you seal anything with the brushos before doing anything else to it because the Mod Podge actually reactivated it and it kind of bled off over here. On all of the journals, the inside and outside, except for the back side panels, which I'll show you here in just a second, I have Mod Podge those with just the matte Mod Podge. That being said, the box, which there were actually two because it grew as many of the journals do. This is the second box that they do actually all fit in and these were made from scraps and I used the gloss, high gloss on the box itself. Um, this was all left over. So you can see again, here's the folded piece. That was a little piece that I had left over and other fun stuff left over there. Um, all the papers are from the Cloudy Seaside set, but we played with scale. So these are gonna be some of the smaller pieces. These are the printing it at like 100% from, from, the, from the set. This was the little box that I started out with. All folded up without anything in on them. They did fit they quickly did not fit. So that's the box and the pieces. Let's get it started on actually opening up one of these. Put those over to the side. So this was the blue, first of the blue set. And we made these little ropes from some awesome, from an awesome gift that was sent to us by Whiff Candles. And it was one piece and I, pulled it apart and cut it in half and it worked perfectly for all four of them. And then I just used some embroidery thread, did some ties, kind of like friendship bracelets. I don't know if any of you guys made those. I'm sure you did at some point, but I think that was one of the type of knots. And then put a little glue there just for you know, safety reasons unraveling. So here's the first one. The ribbon here I put on afterwards. Oh, actually we make these little washer things. Basically they're just cut out from the Cricut. We emboss them, color them, or we'll color them, emboss them, modge podge them, and sometimes even emboss them again or color them again. And that, that worked out really nicely on the little button holder piece. And then this, Patricia just sewed on the button for me. Okay, to create the flip panels, this was a little bit of work as far as like layout was concerned. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the light and make sure. This is laid out in three panels on a, on a, InDesign file. 
which I'm gonna hopefully have this available for you guys. I'm working on it um, without the artwork. So you can put in whatever you want. You can, you know, cut out stuff and just be able to glue it on, tape it on, whatever you need to do. But this was three pieces. I folded this, the front side, to the back side of this, and then this glued down. So then that way I had front and back and it was all on one sheet which was very nice. And then just Mod Podged everything. So this is really two sheets of paper. But I used text weight paper for all of it for that reason, because I just knew it was gonna get bulky anyway and I was gonna Mod Podge it. All of these smaller panels are the paper from the Cloudy Seaside set just shrunk down. Again, I think I'm gonna have that available for you guys if you want to purchase that set tag created by Patricia I cut it down it was longer there are two pieces to it I don't remember exactly what I did with the other part I think it may actually be in in this one as well but just ripped these from printed pieces and then <laughs> glued it on so that way it had a nice little flap and you can just tuck that in there like that. And there you go, that's that panel. Kind of spread this out, it'd be easier to show you guys everything. So same thing here is this is one of the envelopes. I just cut it up and then kind of gave it a nice little wave so it felt very clam-like because this is kind of my clam panel. And my little clam. Tag. Sorry, I'm tro so trying to get my, there we go. Pearls just dangling from the gold embroidery thread. Highly recommend this stuff. Kind of tricky to work with, but it's so cool and I love it and I use it a lot. These were just torn pieces. You'll notice throughout a lot of this, we, we use the same embossing folder which is this lovely one right here. Not even sure, I can't remember what that brand is, but love, love, love that. Sorry for blinding you with the light. So, Mod Podge the top of this, it actually reactivated the brush out on this piece as well. Turned out to be an okay situation, but a little scary when I saw it happening. Just pieces left over, off cuts, and little. There we go. And that is the clam pocket. Again, smaller. I, actually, this is one of the full sheets. Used it. I left this because I kind of liked it again. It looked kind of clam like. And I said everything has been mod podged. Now, this panel, I used, I had printed out one of the posters, smaller, but not small enough. So I cut out, fussy cut out the seashell and put it on a little, um, oh, what do you call them? Pop-up, like the foam pop-up things. Added extra glue, because I knew it was gonna get some use. Just cut out a little piece of paper there, glued it on both sides. Again, embroidery thread, I love it. I use it tons. Never to actually embroider anything. This was a pretty easy one. This is just a, another accordion fold. Ah, oh, see, there's the other piece. To that little thing, I made a little belly band for it, like so. Oh, actually, I like it like this. There we go. So it's just some leftover pieces from the smaller set. And again, this was, there's a panel behind there, and then I put one in front of it, because I wanted this to be a little bit, because it's smaller, it didn't run the full length. So I just tucked the longer piece behind there. You can kind of see it 
put that bigger panel over it. And then that folds in. And this guy little folds him in place. That's so neat. Sorry, it's a lot easier to do like that. There we go. Then if you flip it over to the back side, like I was saying, none of this has been Mod Podged. Just because I like it the way it is and I'm afraid of what the Mod Podge will do to it. And after everything has been Mod Podged and sat for 24 hours, if not more, they're still a little sticky even still, but this Distress Glaze stuff works great to keep them from sticking so, so much and certainly allows you to be able to unstick them. So that's journal number one. Journal number two of the blue. Same fastener, different little washer thing and two different size buttons because we couldn't they're similar that they are pearl, but different in size. All right, again, same back side. And with the back sides, I went ahead and it is one sheet. Well, it's the same sheet I did in blue and in yellow. So this is the blue version, and you can see that they run together too. If you put them together, they all match up. And then just the different panels of the artwork. But the background parts all match. And see, top and bottom, they go together too. Or there's some cohesiveness to them. together. This is just the opposite. So this one flips up, this one flips down. And then I put a belly band instead of, you know, information stuff inside of here to hold other cool little stuff. Let's slide that one up a little bit. Tag I made from old clothing tags. Put pieces of paper that we had left over from this and then my printed out quote. pieces left over from the smaller panels and this has the glossy Mod Podge on it. I took a piece of vellum, ripped it, crinkled it, did a little bit of alcohol ink marker on the edges just to give it a little you know pop from from the background and then Mod Podged it which was a bit tricky because it had already been stuck down but I made it happen and it looks really cool. Okay. See that, see the crinkles and just kind of strengthened it up because sometimes that vellum stuff can be a bit, what did we say the other day? Brittle, kind of brittle. Um, backed it with some more of the leftover bigger sheets, rip, tear it out one of the starfish, put it on the back there. And these are all made from um, stamps that Patricia made. They, they are, there's an original to that. And then we just scan them in and I can make them different sizes and use them for our digitals. And that goes back in there like so. Like the Mod Podge, because it really lets you be able to slide that stuff in and out. This is a really nifty panel because it kind of folds funny. It's not a true, because I wanted this to show, this part of it, because it looked so awesome. Like, you know, this painting by H.S. Took, I think that's how you say it, with the guy on the boat. Actually, it's Sleeping Sailor, along with the Van Gogh, but it went so well, that part of the panel. So I folded it purposefully like this and then just bookended it and left this plain. 
This would also be a good little place for a tuck or a pocket. And a little bit about the Vincent Van Gogh that is here. It's the seascape near the Saint Marie de la Mer. Probably butchered that. This we use throughout. Let me tell you how we make this. In all the posts that I talked about the yogurt tops, that's the yogurt top. What we do, just, we like Noosa. We really like the lemon. Take that. Take the embossing folder. Run it through. Then use about three or four different alcohol inks on it different areas. Sometimes it's best to like let them dry here and there, then add another, come back in, spray it with just this plain alcohol, rub it, and move it around a bit, and then that's how all that came about. Hopefully that showed it enough and didn't kind of blind you too much. But this is really cool stuff. Um, I will warn you that it, it gets a little flimsy on the edges. This particular embossing folder, it started breaking at these little wispy ends. So I came back in with just um, a tool that I use here. Basically it was a paintbrush. Paintbrush end and kind of pushed them down. And this also has a layer of Mod Podge on it to help seal it and kind of hold those pieces down. Because it was starting to fray up a bit, is the best way I can explain that. One of the pockets from the kit. Small background. Small background? I think I went ahead and sized this, and so in this newer set, the small to go with making a journal like this, I will include some sizes like this to be able to put whatever you want. Um, so what you would do is just, you know, print that out, print the other thing out, put those together, trim it. And all of it has been distressed with various things. I really like using kind of the Mr. Huey sprays or some of the inks. Um, a lot of times I'll even use the alcohol ink markers to do my edges. Just depends on if I want it looking more watery or what I want. The pockets themselves already have a distressed look to them, but I do go back and what's funny is with my ink, my, my Canon ink, it bleeds a bit when I use any of the water-based sprays and sometimes that works to my advantage, so just something to keep in mind there. And again, more ephemera stuff and just backed it with this is a full size sheet of off cut that just looks really cool in that pocket like that and you have the little shells coming out because it matches matches and then like I said we already showed you that and that's the two sets of blue set that off to the side now for the this one I have not done the quick flip through on at this point. I'm not sure that I will simply because we're sitting here chit-chatting right now. But you guys have seen some of the pieces and parts from this. And I think I'll go ahead and lay out the other gold one so you can kind of see how they go together. We can kind of quickly move through the rest of this. And all the same process with the Mod Podge front and back. Um, I added s some more of the, I didn't like how the edge looked on this particular one. So I went in and added the gold embroidery thread and all I did was <laughs> I pulled out a piece, kind of marked it, knew that that's where I put a little knot there and a little knot there. And then I knew that I wanted kind of a tassel bit at the bottom of the bottom one and at the top of the top one. So that way when you lay them out, they look like so, together. And I wanted these two to line up because the kimono card is just so cool. 
it had to have something equally as awesome below it. And I did these upside down pockets because I watched something that Jeanette had done and I'm like, that's what I need to do is upside down pockets. So thank you again, Jeanette, once again. And then these two panels go together. So let's kind of start with, well, let's go through this real quick. Cool little, just torn pieces off of watercolor paper. Did the watercolor, love this, the color, how do you say it, mom? Coloro, coloro? C-O-L-I-R-O, coloro. I know. Comment below. Let me know how it's said. <coughs> I haven't watched enough to hear people say it. <laughs> anyway, this stuff is awesome. That's what I use on all the little deckled edges and anything that looks gold and shiny is most likely this. I have some other little tricks that I use, but that's the main one. More little ephemera. So the shell that was on the blue one, this is the poster it came from. I just made it way too big. So I was like, I didn't want to waste it. And that's why I had cut out some of the shells. I have still some of the little pieces left over here to do that again. I, I'd actually planned on maybe doing that to some of these others, but um, didn't turn out to get, just go that way. In fact, this is a full sheet, just left over. I like this one showing through, so I folded it and I like this part and I ended up trimming it down more because I also like this little postcard thing that I found. It's front and back. And I did this in a similar way like I was talking about on the flip panels. I went ahead, printed it side by side, folded it over, glued it, then cut it out. And then that way everything lines up beautifully. It was printed on one sheet. I didn't have to do front and back and figure that out or cut things out and stick them together. It drives me crazy. That's just, you know, welcome to my world, how I process things. So those two little pieces tuck in there and then there's actually a pocket. And this is one of the pockets from the kit. And I think this is its true size. I probably cut some of the bottom part off, I think. I can't remember. But I might size it properly for this kind of kit thing that I'm talking about that I may be doing here. Um, just distressed, did that before, mod podging, everything again is mod podged just because I like the way it looks and feels and sounds and it makes the artwork look like, you know, actual artwork, it's cool. So like the blue set, I did a flip up and then like we have a flip down. This is just information about Matsu Basho, Basho um, which is the artwork on this one. And a lot of you will recognize that, it's the big wave. And then this is part of a series of 36. So I went ahead and have all 36. Along with then the information about Katsushiku. And that's the artist and about the great wave. I like a little art history with my, you know, journal. <laughs> There's a magnet here, so this just holds there. The other cool thing about this little part, and I'll get back to that, is that it can slide underneath there and hold, and then that way, and then you can kind of go move on to the tag. This has three-dimensional Mod Podge on part of it on this side. Sometimes the matte Mod Podge will dull out the the watercolor. So I went ahead and made sure to use this here. Plus it gives it a really cool, and I'm not sure you can see it in the camera or not, but like three-dimensional kind of floaty situation. Hopefully at one of those angles there, I think that one's probably pretty good. You get to see that. These were just tear-offs from some other art that I have actually this <laughs> that I use to do the ends. I should probably talk about how I did that. Whenever I did the front, all four pieces stuck together, I left little hanger off bits because I knew that it 
I wanted to do a wrap. So this is then kind of glued in here. It's looking a little rough, but I kind of like that look. I'm okay with that. If you wanted, you could probably clean that up and you know do other things. But I wanted to be able to have this kind of wrap around cover. So that allowed me to do that once they were complete and I knew like the colors and all that because I just wasn't sure at the beginning state. Like this was done at the end. That's just some of the torn off pieces from this. So that way they would match up because that was important to me that everything kind of would match up. You guys have seen the little video. I did go ahead and make this a bit more gold again with the Calero watercolors. I made the little band out of some vellum, gold vellum that I have, which is really tricky stuff to work with. It's just funky and you gotta watch when you glue it. It's like regular vellum and it always shows through. So where you glue it, that sort of thing. But I went ahead and just kind of fold this around and made this belt looking piece. I know there's a name for it, can't remember it. On the kimono. What's the name of the belt on the kimono? Oh, the Obi. Obi. There we go. Obi like. Because this is certainly not tr hide traditionally. Trust me, I thought about doing that. It was tricky. So, this is my representation. <laughs> this little piece, it was in some jewelry junk stash collection stuff. <laughs> But, such an ugly word. <laughs> that Patricia gave me. <laughs> but it wasn't gold enough, like I said, so I went ahead and did the... It's, it's holding up. It doesn't... Look, it's not rubbing off. So I'm pretty happy with that situation because it needed to be the goldy gold. All right, so I found a kimono online that I loved, a vintage one, and then just made that into a tag. went in with my deco marker, my Marvi Uchata deco marker, which I love, but those things, they run out and kind of expensive. Anyway, went through and did all of the little flowers. So there's, but it lost a little bit of its shine whenever I Mod podge it, but it had to be Mod Podged because it was already starting to kind of tear at the edges, so a little definition which I thought was pretty cool. I love definitions of things, learning what things mean. Then I went ahead, I have not Mod Podge this one. Quick little, I have to wear a traditional kimono or wrap it along with a funny, and I wrote this in my handwriting. <laughs> you won't see a lot of that because <laughs> I like printing things out and I like fonts. So it's a cute little quote that went well with the kimono. This piece I also have not, but I did do the top part with the Mod Podge. And this was just, again, one of the off cuts used. I think this, because this is pretty bright, I went ahead and used some of the Delusion Shimmer on the edge of it, because I liked that little bit more punchy yellow on that particular piece. And see, that's supposed to be kind of like the, and I know there's a word for that too, the under dress of the kimono. Although it's traditionally white. And that goes there and there. And I went ahead and just printed out a second one to create the band, because I just didn't want to lose any of it. I thought it was so cool. And then we'll just put that back in place. Back over here. Boop. Slide that guy back up there. Those pieces go there. Talk about the second one that goes with it. Like I said, so this is the flip down. This is my Claude, Claude Monet, which there was a lot of inspiration. Um, Japanese gardens to Claude Monet, so I felt that it really fit well with of my theme and where everything went. All right, this piece is really cool because 
number one, it uses quite a bit of the yogurt top embossed pieces and parts. There's a magnet behind here. This is some of this piece because the yellow went so well. Um, then this is actually paper, some metallic paper because I needed a bit more and I didn't have another yogurt top right at the time. So Patricia went ahead and made me one and I just cut it out. So this top piece is paper. This one's the aluminum or whatever the yogurt top is. Magnet behind there. I covered this magnet. It's already, it's kind of crazy just from playing with it. it. It's starting to thin out or the embossing's kind of wearing in or down. It doesn't have the color on it anymore but it's still kind of there and it looks great. There's also another magnet inside of here, or sorry, on the back side here. I may have put two. I think I put two because I needed it to connect here, here, along with the inside there, like that. And they're pretty strong, but they're not that strong to go through all of the paper and the Mod Podge. I will have this in the kit, this little petal card. A lot of you probably know how to cut one. I didn't prior to this. I, I had an idea, but I wanted it to match the papers. And then, yeah, see, there's another magnet in there. I used the black part of the yogurt top. So it's all embossed. Little bits of pieces from the same here, because it was a little rough on the edges, and I just, I, I didn't like that. And this is some of, again, this same paper here in the smaller and it made a really nice little s swish wave everything else you know obviously has kind of a water wavy seaside theme this is a really cool little compact looking piece and i will include this as well and it flips open and coin or a compact and then it has the information on the inside about Kiru Benton Zut which is a goddess some really cool information about that if you're interested and then that just got a fold gotta grab my magnet out of there goes back in I did trim it down um, I, I didn't really think about it when I was doing it, but I, I will make sure that I will size that circle down so that way it fits better in there. I had to do a bit more trimming and then I did the gold gilding on the outside. Kind of already talked about that, but just a little trifold. And that one's fairly simple too, as far as simple in layout, but these panels here were, when I printed it, it was all one piece. These fold back, glue that. This one folds back, glue that, and then just fold and fold top. I will have instructions on the thing because I, I know that sometimes that stuff messes with my brain. I loved this butterfly that mom and the Patricia had printed out or she'd stamped it it just wasn't quite right in just its stamped form so I went ahead of course out of the gold water coloring came back um, did some alcohol ink still wasn't quite right 3d Mod Podge it again with this awesome stuff then once it was dried came back in with alcohol ink markers and did a bit more accent work there. Then on the back side, I wanted something textile in this. I was really looking for finding some kind of material that was almost kimono-like with silk. I just didn't have any of that right now, building that type of stash or collection. I don't know if I need to do that or not, but these are things I think about. Use the gold watercolor here 
to just accent. This was just a piece of, I'm guessing, polyester. But it had the right pattern. Used alcoholic markers to make it match. Very into matchy. It tucks and was just so meant for this little pocket. This was, again, off cut stuff left over from tearing. Used the gold watercolor. And then I just kind of did a fold. I wanted it to feel almost fan-like or like what you would put in your OB. I, I know there's, what was the name of the, the tuck? There's the piece that tucks into the OB. Natsuki. Yeah, Natsuki-like. There's just lots of little hints. Nothing is spot on. It's just more of a, a feel. Impression. There we go. It's good I have Gigi around here. Patricia. Okay. This was one of my leftover bits of the... More of the... Yogurt top. I won't... It needed to be a bit darker than the other pieces. To kind of match up. So, Patricia came back in and did more of these which there was Ranger Pool, Ranger Sailboat, and Jacquard Baja Blue were the main ones used on these. Then I again had leftover, this is just bits and pieces, used marker to cover up some of, because this was a little tag off of clothing. Then little glass beads with, of course, gold embroidery thread. Do you have any information about the glass beads? Um, what? The glass beads. Um, not really. Okay. Uh, they're just old. They're old. Blue glass beads. We love them. There's a butterfly and a leaf. I mean, it just was very spot on. Yeah, they're at least 20 years old. Another clothing tag. More of the watercolors, both in the silver and gold. Quote, torn pieces. This is some of the off-cut paper ripped. I didn't like how the blue was showing through so vividly, so I used a bit of Posca and some and some colored pencil to tone it down. Again, torn pieces, been Mod Podge, and there you have it. That's Cloudy Seaside, the four sets, and a rundown of kind of how things were made. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or want us to do an actual process video of some of this, let us know below. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Come back. We, we love doing these videos. I just don't always know what you guys want to see or don't want to see. So we don't know that unless you let us know. Thanks again. Bye.